guys, welcome. Today we're gonna make some little crocheted hearts for our February heart along. The idea is to make little stuffed hearts for us to send to our friends and loved ones who cannot be with us because of the ongoing pandemic. So for materials, you will need worsted weight yarn. Um, I have a three millimeter hook and also I have little scissors and a stitch marker. Okay, so to start out, where's the end? Okay, so to start out, we're gonna do a magic ring. We do have a video on our channel on how to make a magic ring. Uh, Brittany does a really good job of showing you how to do it. And in this magic ring, we're going to do a single crochet six times. So six, six single crochets in our magic ring. And I think it helps <laughs> when I have my hook twisted around the right way. So we've got one, two, three, and here's four, and five, and six. Okay, so I've got my six single crochet and now we're gonna pull this tight. And every time I do a magic ring, I end up with a huge long tail, but that's okay. It's easy enough to trim it when I'm done. Or in this case, probably stuff it on the inside. So, okay, so you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna join my magic ring here. But before I join, I'm gonna use my stitch marker keep, to keep track of the ends of my rounds. On this project, we are gonna crochet in the round to make the two heart bumps. So we're starting here, we'll make this heart bump, finish off, do this heart bump, and then we won't finish off, but then we will connect the hearts and then we'll be going around and around and around to do decreases until we get to the point at the end. Okay, so to keep track of our rounds because we're not gonna be slip stitching them together, I am going to be placing my stitch marker in the last stitch of each round so I don't have to constantly count my stitches and lose my place and mess up because uh, that's what happens when I don't put in a stitch marker. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do an increase in every single stitch going around. So we've started with six single crochets and we'll end with 12. So then, you know, to do an increase, you simply single crochet twice into the same stitch. Okay. And let's see here. Get to the end of our round. And don't forget the stitch with the marker in is the last stitch of our round. Oh my gosh, it makes it so much easier with the counting. Whoops, here we go. You know, isn't it nice when the YouTube lady who's showing you how to do it also messes up? <laughs> okay, here we are. So this should be 12. So we can count just to be sure. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my marker out. Marker is out. And I'm going to replace it into the last stitch of the round I just finished. Here we are, I'm gonna slip this last stitch of the round I just finished. Okay, there goes the hook. We'll slide our hook back in. And now, now what we're going to do is we are going to do an increase in one stitch and then we'll do a single crochet in the following stitch or actually we'll do a single crochet and then an increase. So it'll be one and then two, and then one and then two, and then one and then two, all the way around. So at the end of round two, we will have 18 stitches. Okay, so we're gonna single crochet in the first one. First one's gonna be a little tight. And then 
we'll do our increase in the following stitch. And we're gonna do this all the way to the end of our round, which is back where the marker is. And I will see you when we get there. Okay, here we are. So we've got one single crochet and then we've got our increase. This is one and two. Okay, so then I'm gonna remove the marker and I'm gonna replace it. So now we have 18 stitches around. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do Snug. We're going to do two plain rounds of single crochet. So that just means one stitch, one, one thing per, one stitch per stitch. So one single crochet in each stitch all the way around for two rounds. Okay, so then I will see you back when we're finished with these two rounds. Okay, and now we're back at the end of round two of doing single crochet. So this is ultimately round five and doing my last stitch and I'm just gonna finish it off. Get my fancy snips. All right, and I can take out my stitch marker. And <laughs> I know it looks like a funny little mini beret, right? <laughs> so we're just gonna flip that inside out. And if you don't know, see this is the inside, this is the outside. Okay, so now we've got like a little hat, it looks like a little hat, but really it's the bump of our heart, see? Okay, so then, now that you've done one heart bump, we're going to do our magic circle again, magic circle, magic ring, and we're going to do the second heart bump, just like this first one, only instead of finishing off how we did here, we're going to leave the yarn attached because we will be going forth to create the rest of our heart with this yarn. So I will see you at the end of heart bump number two. So we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so then this is the last stitch of round five on heart bump number two. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna unclip my marker, put this right side out, and I want to make my loop really big. Okay, so I wanna reclip my marker. Now you got a choice. When I did this the other day, uh, I did it one way where, let me pull out another marker here. I did it one way where I had, um, I had tied the two bumps together in the middle and then picked up stitches and then kind of went around. But the, um, we can try, I'm gonna pull this tight. But then it just came untied, so it really didn't seem to matter. And I thought, well, I mean, I could just go for it. So I just went for it and it was fine. Um, you do whatever you think is best for you. Hmm. Okay, heart bump number one. So essentially what happens is these are gonna be together and you're gonna go all the way around the outside of both. So we're doing like this. Okay, um, I don't know that it really makes a difference where you put these things together. I just kind of like put this end sort of in the middle. So that way I had this extra bit to sew up any kind of joining hole later. That seemed to help. Um, but really, I think it doesn't, I don't think it matters too much. I mean, we can sew the two pieces together, you know, tie them together, see how that goes. Um, but again, you don't, you don't have to. 
because we're literally gonna crochet around the, the whole thing. But okay, for sake of argument, say you do wanna tie these things together so they're not constantly flopping around. Just whoosh, there we go. So essentially we're gonna go from here, we're gonna crochet nine on this, because there's 18 stitches around each of the little cups. So we're gonna crochet nine around here, then crochet nine around, then crochet 18 around here, and then do the last nine back to the beginning. All right, here we go. It's probably over explaining. <laughs> and you're like, come on, Melissa, get with the program. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna crochet nine single crochet over to the middle where the things join up. So it's actually like in the middle. And yes, that is the correct one. I feel like whenever I crochet, I mean, the biggest challenge is knowing where to stick in your hook. <laughs> Do I stick it here? Do I stick it there? Where is it going? In this case, uh, I'm going underneath both legs of the V on the top, just like total standard single crochet all the way around. You can do yours however you want. Also, I wasn't counting. Um, this is the end, the last stitch. So then we've got, this is the last stitch. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this is, okay, seven, eight, nine. All right, so that's, that's half. So look, I had to take the, I had to undo it anyway. I was close. And then I want to do all of the stitches around this one. So we'll start with number one. See, I don't know that the tying it together makes a difference. Oh, and I am so remiss. I should tell you the instructions that I'm using are not just out of my head. I'm not like a magical heart maker. Um, I am using this uh, 3D hearts pattern from Bunnies and Yarn. I will post a link on our website and also I will post a link in the show notes on in the description on this video. So it was a free pattern from Ravelry. Um, I think the crocheted heart patterns are pretty much all the same. I looked at a few. Um, a lot of them are free, some of them are not. I liked this one. It seemed pretty straightforward. Forward, four, forward. Um, there we go. Ah, split a yarn. Okay, so we're going all the way around this guy. See, look, and it's just hanging on, it's hanging on just fine. It's dangling there, it's not coming off. So you should be okay. And we are still in January, which I should take this opportunity to mention that January is our Happy Hooker Happening Month. Woo! <laughs> I know it's a mouthful, all those H's. Um, and so that means this is our month long celebration of all the crochet, which is why I'm doing our heart tutorial first. And we'll put this out this week, uh, Mr. Lovely, this has been so great at editing all our videos for us and so we'll get this one up and running and so for the happy hooker happening how that works is we already did our speed competition um, the speed portion and awarded prizes uh, that was in our latest video the prize winners and so what that means is for the rest of the month you have to create and submit any item that you wish. Um, we have lots of categories. There's granny square categories. So there's one for the biggest granny square and that is the largest granny square created in this month of January, 2021. Um, also, there is a category for the most granny squares. I know our friend Scott has been furiously stitching. He has got quite a number of them done already and we're all only at um well today is january 19th so you know we record the videos a couple days before they come out 
but yeah, so we're a little bit past mid month, but you do still have time to make and send stuff in and it could be anything that you have done. Um, if you wanted to submit scarves, cowls, a sweater, a wrap, amigurumi, um, blankets, throw pillows, um, anything really if you have like some lace doilies that are especially awesome some lace doilies are really incredible um anything that you have crocheted and want to submit to win a prize we've got lots of categories they're all listed on our website lovelyyarns.com and uh, forward slash happy hooker happening and you can see what all the categories are but basically so long as it's something that you have made you are eligible for a prize see so when you when you do this even when you go and like in every stitch around because i did i did do every one um you still get like a little a little gap here and you can sew that shut so we can take a moment and sew it shut now or you can say eh, i'm not going to worry about it sew it shut later i think on mine i did the sewing shut later i don't know it makes a difference up to you however you want to do it it's fine no rules there um so then now we've got our pieces together oh gosh i got these all out of order okay So now we've got them joined and we're going to single crochet around one more round. So they'll be joined very well. Definitely not going to come apart. It's kind of magical how it sort of comes together because you think, oh gosh, how are you going to make this heart shape? But look, we did it and it wasn't even terrible. And the cool thing is, is because it's a little three dimensional object, we don't have to worry about sewing in ends because they're just going to get shoved up on the inside with the stuffing. I think that's pretty spectacular. Oh, yeah, so we were talking about Happy Hooker happening. There's basically a category for everything. We have some great prizes from our vendors and from our local indie dyers. And so essentially, if you submit something, you, you know, you have a very high probability of winning a prize. To submit, we have it's a $5 entry fee and you can submit as many objects as you like. Just make sure you attach your contact info and information about your finished object to the piece so we can A, send them back to you, and B, so we can get you your prize. Um, we will have an online gallery of everyone's finished objects of all the submissions, and we will have a real life gallery, and we'll make a video tour and all that good stuff, so that'll be a good time. Um, I'm trying to think if there be any other questions. Um, about the happy hooker happening. I can't think of any. All right, so that should be good to go. Now we are getting around this guy. Here we go. I know, I'm sorry, I'm not the world's fastest single crocheter. I did not win the speed competition. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even enter because it's I host the competition, so did not enter but I definitely would not win. <laughs> we had a good time with this bead competition. We did it on Zoom um, and it was a granny square. So we was like 30 minutes and who could make the most rounds on their granny square in the time allotted. And that was pretty fun. And then of course there was lots of discussion on, you know, which type of granny square or what was the standard way of making granny square. Where's my next stitch? Oh, here it is. Boom. All right. So, and after this round, it's a series of decreases. So, I like these little hearts. They go pretty fast, which is good because I want to make a whole bunch and, and send them off to some family and friends this next month part of our whole spread love, not COVID campaign. I think that's kind of fun. You know that movie, Love in the Time of Cholera? This is like the same, only as Love in the Time of COVID. <laughs> from a distance, safely from a distance, we'll send you some love in the mail. Okay, so back to the beginning, and I'm gonna replace my stitch marker, and I gotta tell you, whoever invented stitch markers was a genius, you know? Stitch markers, amazing. They just, you know, save my skin every time, keep me from having to count 
all the things all the time. I love it. All right, so now we're gonna do four single crochets and then a decrease. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, and then a decrease. And we'll do that all the way around. So here, we'll go one and two. And then decrease, pull up a loop from one, pull through a loop from the other one, and then we'll crochet them together. Okay, so we'll do it one more time together, and then I'll meet you back at the beginning. So then we've got one, two, So stick it through, pull a loop through one, pull a loop through the next one. So now I have three loops, yarn over, and I'm gonna pull through all three. Bam! Just like that. All right, we'll see you back at the beginning. Okay, so back at the beginning, um, when you join your stuff around, if you were off by one, so long as you end up with 30 stitches after this round, you're probably good to go. All right, so gonna put our marker in here and I say that because I was off by one but um, I just didn't do the last decrease and now I have 30 stitches so it's fine okay and besides no one will notice who's gonna who's gonna notice no one no one will notice <laughs> all right so then after that then we're gonna do a plain round and then the next round is gonna be three single crochets and then a double crochet so uh, we'll do our, get started on our plain round here, and then we'll see you back at the next round. Okie dokes. So just make sure you've got 30 stitches, and then do a plain round. Okay, so now we've done um, the single crochet four, decrease one, and we did our, for a round, and now we're at our, then we did our plain round. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna single crochet three. So here's one, two, three, and then we're gonna decrease. So three, one, two. So again, three loops on and pull through. And we're gonna do one, two, three, decrease all the way around. One, two, three, and then we're gonna decrease again. You sure are gonna get really good at decreasing by the end of this, man. I tell you what. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do this all the way around, and then after this round, there is also a plain round where we're just gonna single crochet around. So we do a plain single crochet round after every decrease round. And then at the beginning of the next, then I'll see you after the single crochet round. Okay. Okay, so I did the three single crochet, do a decrease all the way around, and then I did a plain round of single crochet. And so now my heart looks like this, or rather looks like this. We'll puff it up. Look, it looks like this. Okay, so then, uh, for this round, what we're going to do is two single crochets and then a decrease all the way around, at the end of which you will have 18 stitches. Also, at the end of, the, at the end of that particular decrease round, I'm going to put some stuffing into my heart because it'll be real hard to do it at the very end. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to do... Um, knit, or sorry, knit two, we're gonna single crochet two. One, and two, and we'll do a decrease. Boom. And we'll do this all the way around. Oh, and also I should tell you guys, um, for the month of January, which is rapidly coming to a close, crazy how the time flies, um, we are doing Wednesday night hook ends from 7 to 9 p.m. on Zoom. And you know, you all are always welcome to come join us for any social stitching that we may be doing on Zoom. 
Uh, to get a link, all you have to do is RSVP to me at lovelyyarns at gmail.com. Say, hey, I'd like to join for Sip and Stitch, which is on Thursdays from 7 to 9 p.m. Or you want to join us for Wednesday night stitching, which is also 7 to 9 p.m. Both are on Zoom, so you can join from anywhere. And we are on the East Coast, so it's, uh, I think we're daylight saving time still, which is so, oh, I was miscounting. So this is together, one, so you're together, so look like this and so then there's one two so then this is supposed to be a decrease yeah so zoom is good for any time although i suppose from the west coast if we begin at 7 eastern that would be 3 p.m your time so it might be a little a little tricky but maybe you can play hooky from work and make it work <laughs> But at any rate, you're always welcome to join us. So then this is the other one, two, and this is, so see the decrease looks like this. It's got this slanty bit over here, and then one, two. Okay, so then we're doing decrease. And also, we had put out on another video a call for questions. So if you all have any questions um, about crochet, knitting, fiber, yarn, anything yarn store related, send us an email so we can put together a good question video because I'd love to help answer some of your questions. I don't know what everybody's questions are. This is the last decrease of this round. All right, so I'm gonna pull this loop big. I'm gonna put my green stitch marker to mark the last stitch of the round. And then the orange stitch marker is gonna hold my working loop so it doesn't all come undone. It's funny, it looks like little yellow pants. Okay, and fiber fill. Time to fill this baby up. And you want them pretty plump. Like, this one's pretty solid. So the idea for these hearts, I thought it would be fun to do for February. You know, because not everybody can be together. I thought it would be fun to make little hearts. And then, you know, it's something you can all sort of do apart together. Oh, also we have a really good Facebook group. It's the Lovely Yarns Fiberati. And Lovely Yarns, of course, is all one word with one Y. Yes, yeah, I'll just sew that shut later. Okay, so there's some droopiness. We'll have to shove some stuffing in it again later. But we're nearly done because after this is one plain round one decrease round. Okay, so after this we've got one, two more decrease rounds and two plain rounds. And then that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna unclip my live stitch. Grabbing my hook, so then this is gonna be a plain round. So this is just single crochet all the way around. And you should have 18 stitches around. So then of course, like I'm using worsted weight yarn. If you use fatter yarn, probably you will need a hook that's a little bit bigger than three millimeters. Likewise, if you are using thinner yarn, you'll need a hook that is smaller than three millimeters. But I would use one that's like a few sizes smaller than what you normally would use with any particular weight yarn because you don't want the stuffing to poke through and come out and, you know, look sad. Yeah, you want your heart to be solid. My crochet gauge is really loose. 
somehow when I'm crochet, my crochet is much looser than my knitting. Isn't that kind of interesting? I think it's how you hold the yarn. Because also I notice when knitting, if I'm knitting continental, that's holding the yarn in my left hand. My gauge is way looser than when I knit English, which is holding the yarn in my right hand. So yeah, so please send in questions. Tell us some of your favorite things. Uh, is there something you've been dying to know but been afraid to ask? Is there a technique you want to learn? Uh, let us know. Okay, getting back here to the beginning. Almost there, almost there. And then I love it because after this, the rounds go really fast because it gets so much smaller. Exponentially so. Okay, so this is the last stitch of this round. Okay, bam. All right, last stitch of this round. So moving our green marker Now on this round, we're going to single crochet one and then do a decrease. So then after this round, we will only have 12 stitches. See, it's getting smaller. One and decrease. Last bit decrease. All right, so we got through all of these. Move our stitch marker again. And then we have one plain round again. So I'll see you back at the beginning of this. So I want to do, because now we only have 12 stitches, and look, so the opening here is getting smaller. So I'm gonna do one more plain round um, and then I'll see you back and we'll make a decision about whether to put in more stuffing then or do the next, the last de decrease round and then do the stuffing. Um, but I'll see you back. Okay, friends, so we are back and the little opening at the, see, look, our heart is like really looking very heartful. Look, now there's two, uh, almost two. All right, so the opening down here is getting pretty small. So I think I am gonna put the last bit of stuffing in now, because remember we have one more round of decreases to bring our stitch count to six. So on this last round, we're just gonna do uh, decrease all the way around, like all the stitches, decrease, decrease, until there are six stitches left. And then we're gonna close up the bottom and then do our little finishing, weave in our ends, <laughs> weave in our ends, AKA shove the end inside the heart. <laughs> and then I wanna sew up this little gap at the top. And then we will be done so. Hurrah! Huzzah, hurrah! Okay, here we are, shove it in there. some more, I think. Hmm. That ought to be okay. Okay, use your best judgment on stuffing a mound. Um, always like plump, a plump heart. Okay, so now we are going to do decrease all the way around. Okay, so we're gonna decrease all the way around. Whoops in there okay I know it's always weird when you're crocheting when you've got the stuffing right by the top because then you're always worried like your hook is gonna snag on some of the polyfill um, and Sari who works with me at the shop part-time on Saturdays she recommends you can cut off part of like a pantyhose or something and then put the stuffing inside of my trimmed up pantyhose and then shove it inside your amigurumi because then the stuffing definitely will not come out I mean that's a pretty good idea so like if you've got forethought 
might want to think about doing that. So this is one, I need the other stitch. And I always want to get small, it's weird and fiddly. Get in there. Okay, and then we go through, there's one, and then stick it in here, it's two, okay, and then drag it through. Oh, and if you're wondering, the yarn, the yellow and the pink over here are from Sweet Georgia. Myself a tail, right? So we'll cut this out here. So I'm gonna pull this loop through. We've got our tail threaded through our needle. And what I do is I just go under each one like that. Mm -hmm. Sort of gather them together. Bring it back to the beginning. This is the beginning. Okay, and then pull it tight. Look, done. Alright, pull it tight and stab it through. Come on, stab through, stab through. And actually, this might be long enough that I can use this tail. Wow. Oh yeah, look at that. That worked. I can use it to sew up this funky gap up at the top. making this up. So like if you have a gap at the top of yours, like I have at the top of mine, you can make it up too. And you know what? You will be totally fine. Too. And I have a yellow one to match my pink one. Hooray! So then now you have a finished heart as well. Well, thank you all so much for watching and making hearts with us. Uh, enjoy the rest of your January and February. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and happy stitching! Bye!